have actually already made a Fontaine based video before where I discussed that the nation may not be as pleasant as the trailer makes it out to be. But today, I want to return to that topic since it's been well over a few months already. So welcome to Fontaine, the land of luxuries and lies. Where today I'll be diving into more theories for the upcoming Nation of Hydro. I've already covered the more in-game narrative side in the old video, so today I want to shift the focus on real-life inspirations, possible locations, mythologies, and even character inspirations. This will be a complete 180 for my Sumeru discussion video since I'm not tackling any story structure. But disclaimer, this is all just a theory and none of this is indicative of the final product. If you like this kind of content, please consider subscribing or supporting the channel through other means. But let's begin. So if you want to find out where we should derive our inspirations from, we should find out the real-life country or countries that region is based off of and the time period as well. For example, Inazuma might be set in the Japanese Edo period based on the characters' clothes and the architecture of buildings resembling traditional Edo period castles. So let's begin with the time period. With the way the trailer shows the featured characters, we can take a guess that it's from an era of suit, ties, top hats, and a lot of pizzazz which could dive into the Great Gatsby era, or better known as the Roaring Twenties. The Roaring Twenties was an era of jazz, and a lot of prohibition and consumerism. There were a lot of artistic renaissances during this time, and in modern media, this is best shown through the suit-wearing and vice-indulging revolution. It was a moment of freedom that the people demanded after the constrictions of the Great War. This kind of artistic renaissance would be a great allegory to Fontaine being the hub of all arts. So next is the location. Based on the name, Fontaine is French-based. Fontaine's name is based on the French word for fountain, and the name may be a reference to the French commonplace in Paris called Fontaine Bleu. French culture and mythologies are already rich in the references used for Fontaine, but I also want to consider mythologies and cultures from other Western countries that could also follow the theme of the trailer. For example, the use of Verdea, the loch's name, the loch part specifically, could be a reference to the Loch Ness of Scottish mythology. Some names of the NPCs have English inspirations as well. Like for example, an NPC named Gaiman could be a reference to a famous English writer who wrote the book Coraline. If they do want to go through the Roaring Twenties vibe, as well as the masqueradish aesthetic of mystery, both French and English would be a great jumpstart given the Roaring Twenties was prevalent in London and Paris as well. There is even a French term for this decade, Annie Folle. Okay, wait, but don't get this too misconstrued. The time frame of the Anifola isn't meant to lock everything in the 20s, but instead just a rough guide for the feel of Fontaine in general. The general aesthetic, I guess. Most of the inspirations I'm going to be covering go as far as the medieval ages, and most of the modern equivalents go back to the 19th century. So when I say that the Anifola is an inspiration, it's just the possible general aesthetic and feeling of Fontaine rather than anything specific. Also, for some reason, I'm getting Phantom of the Opera vibes, which is a French work by Gaston Leroux. Maybe I'm just getting mind controlled by the word Masquerade of the Guilty, which probably shouldn't be taken literally. Now, there's a reason why I considered a more modern approach to Fontaine. For example, the first three nations were relatively behind in terms of global cultural revolution. Technologically, there aren't any. Most are still derived from gods and the divine. But for Fontaine, we might be seeing a shift of themes. Fontaine is known as the hub of arts and music. As said in the lore, they are more technologically advanced than some of the other nations, second only to the militaristic capabilities of Snezhnaya. But in terms of lifestyle and just overall quality of life and public access to the technology, Fontaine might be the closest to the modern world than the other nations. If I had to make a comparison, it would be the Tevat equivalent to League of Legends' Piltover, a land of prosperity where magic and science are brought together for the betterment of human civilization. I would love to see Fontaine as a kind of a steampunk city that relies on industrialization to fuel its nation's necessities. But at the same time, Snezhnaya was also known to have factories and questionable laboratories, so the overlap may be a little uncanny. Nevertheless, Fontaine was experimenting on new forms of visionless transportation, so maybe a floating city or an underwater city isn't too far-fetched of an idea. We already have plostrite as a material that holds up the jade chamber, so if Fontaine could utilize the opposite way, an underground city inside a glass dome might not be too far off. In the game, we know that they were the creators of both the camera and the film. The camera in our world was created by a French inventor. In 1827, Joseph took the first photograph. The first photograph was a view from his window in Grasse near Lyon, France. The creation and development of film were also French. 
On January 10, 1888, the French artist and inventor Louis Le Prince registered the first British patent for a camera that was capable of filming motion. He recorded the earliest known motion picture on October 14, 1888. The film, later known as Round Hay Garden Scene, was an actuality film that lasted 1.66 seconds. As for the earliest breakthrough for commercial films, the Lumiere brothers were French manufacturers of photography equipment, better known for their cinematography motion picture system and the short films that were produced between 1895 and 1905, which places them among the earliest filmmakers. As for other industrial things, we might be getting some form of aerial mass travel, like an airship maybe to give way to Snezhnaya. In the game, an NPC named Ramsey says that he made a Tevat travelogue that covers other nations. While the book itself is fake, he says he got inspirations from real-life experience. For example, he met someone that traveled the world in 80 days on a visionless air vessel, which could be a reference to the book Around the World in 80 Days, first published in French in 1872. Now for my personal take. Genshin Impact's development would have advanced so much as opposed to what we have right now in Inazuma. I don't doubt we'd get more features in Fontaine given it's a central mid-game, so maybe we'll get a new transportation system like Inazuma. Inazuma had the Wave Rider because it's island-based, so an air transport system in Fontaine would be pretty nice. On other takes, we'd probably get more clockwork and mechanical toys and gizmos that kinda resemble our own modern mechanical world. They were also the ones that helped the Mikage Furnace, so we might get something mirroring the industrial age where technology is mixed with the magic of Genshin Impact. The list of technological advancements is endless, and this is because we came from Sumeru, which is a nation of knowledge. One of the reasons I wanted to make this video was to cover the possible mystical inspirations of Fontaine. Given that we're diving into European mythologies, we might be getting Breton mythologies mixed into Genshin's lore. Brittany is a historical country in the west of modern France. So let's make comparisons. The first correlation might be tied to the Lock Folk, or more specifically Rodea. Rodea is an oceanid that lives in Chingsa village. Her form and the way she fights reminds me of Groak. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. A water fairy that lives in the caverns, under the beach, and under the sea. The Groak has power over the forces of nature and can change its shape. It is mainly portrayed as a malevolent figure, capable of luring others before feasting on unsuspecting victims. There are other creatures that are known for drowning others in Breton mythology. Morgans, Morgans, or Mary Morgans, are Welsh and Breton water spirits that drown men. These are compared to sirens, who lured sailors with their hypnotic voices and sat in the water to comb their hair seductively. Now, as a connection to people being lured into the ocean in Genshin Impact, we can go through the story of Wu Wang Hill. There is a fable that is oft repeated among the children of Qingzi village. It holds that the young people of Wu Wang Hill, enchanted by the whale-like song of a faraway sea monster, all threw themselves into the gently flowing Baishu River to pursuit of false promises and childlike dreams. Along the river they floated, making their way to the Sea of Clouds, where they became one with the waves and lost all memories of the woods and their village on the hill. Their dreams, meanwhile, became the sea monster's song. Now, while this is a fable, and we don't have confirmation that this is connected to Rodeo or another lock folk, it's still an interesting correlation that we have a sea monster in Chingsa village that is luring people into the Baishu River to drown. And what do you know, that's also a pretty neat little part in Breton folklore. The words you are currently seeing on the screen are said to be the lost souls of those that drowned into the sea and were never recovered. They are said to be heard along coastlines at night, crying, Lu, Lu. Now, come to think about it, sirens and mythologies aren't specifically tied to one kind of culture given that it's been a reiterated trope for many decades. So what I gave you is more or less just a Breton interpretation of it. But moving on, we have the Court of Fontaine. This one is going to be the biggest plot-relevant aspect of Fontaine, given that it's a city of justice. The highest ruling body currently known in Fontaine is called the Court of Fontaine, and apparently it's a court filled with countless gorgeous maidens, as ethereal as the clouds themselves. The court itself controls the Steambird, the biggest newspaper that circulates in Fontaine. So let's tackle the court. 
I believe that the Court of Fontaine aren't inherently human. They are known for their ethereal beauty, and given it's the Hydro Nation, I'm considering maybe these are also under the theme of sirens or mermaids. It's possible we'll get something along the lines of Adepti rank entities that serve the Archon in her quest for justice. The Oceanid, Rodea, was someone that fled from Fontaine and referenced an assassin, meaning that maybe the higher bodies of power in Fontaine have a way to silence sentient elemental creatures. As for the Archon herself, there are two creatures from the Ars Goetia that I think her Archon name would be. Much like Barbados, Morax, Baal, and Beelzebul, I think the Archon name would be either Vepar or Forneas. Forneas is a great sea monster. He causes men to have a good name and to have knowledge and understanding of tongues. He can take many forms, but mainly prefers his human form. In a place known as the Masquerade of the Guilty, it would be an appropriate demon given it hints to be able to clean sins. On the other hand, Vepar is a mermaid and also known as Separ or Vefar. He governs waters and guides armored ships full of weaponry. He can also make seas stormies, rough, and full of ships. He can also make any man die in three days by putrefying his wounds, causing worms to grow in them. Nevertheless, if he is asked by the conjurer, he could heal those wounds instead, much like Hydro as an element. When considering architecture, I have several ideas. We never really got anything about the location of Fontaine itself. For my personal take, I would love it to be an underwater city inside a dome. Unlike in Kanamiya, it would be artificially underwater, but the odds of that are practically like Scaramouche's playability. So instead, I'm betting we're getting more of a modern-looking city similar to Piltover in Arcane, a fantastical recreation of French architecture from the late 19th century to the early 20th century. I would love to see the Bio Arts classic as a primary form of architecture for the buildings. According to Jackie Craven from ThoughtCo, Bio Arts is characterized by order, symmetry, formal design, grandiosity, and elaborate ornamentation. Architectural characteristics include balconies and columns. Stone exteriors are massive and grandiose in their symmetry. Interiors are typically polished and lavishly decorated with sculptures, swags, medallions, flowers, and shields. Interiors will often have a grand stairway and opulent ballroom. According to Louisiana Division of Historic Preservation, it's the showy, almost operatic manner in which these elements are composed that gives the style its characteristic flavor. Fontaine itself was known to be showy and grandiose as according to one of the NPCs that used to live there. Hydra was often associated with glass and prisms like the Hydra Fatui Mage. I'd love to see a building expired by the museum that holds the Mona Lisa. Now, I want to close this video off with the theme of masquerades. Masquerades and ballroom extravaganzas aren't inherently locked in French culture, but the tradition of carnivals were spread to France. As for the twins, let's watch the trailer again. The god of justice lives for the spectacle of the courtroom, seeking to judge all other gods. But even she knows not to make an enemy of the divine. we hear a clock ticking and what might be a clock tower in the back. Both are also wearing stereotypical magician clothes, with Linnea sporting the signature top hat we see in every good magic act. The two also seem to be holding hands. With these details, I believe that they're inspired by a very popular French magician and illusionist called John Eugene Robert Houdin. And no, this isn't the same person when you say Houdini, that's a different guy altogether. John Eugene Robert Houdin was a famous French watchmaker, magician, and illusionist while they recognized as the father of the modern style of conjuring. But before he was a magician, he was a watchmaker and studied horology, which could connect the use of a ticking clock sound effect in the trailer. Another cool coincidence, though, is that he was famous for a trick known as Second Sight. He came up with the idea of doing a two-person mind-reading act and had a blindfolded assistant touch a bunch of items that the audience held up. I just thought it would be a nice coincidence given that they're both twins. But yes, those are all my speculations for Fontaine's inspirations. But I'm not completely done with this topic. See, this is a two-parter series, where for the next one, I'll be covering the potential plot points of Fontaine itself. Maybe. I'm actually kind of interested in that. Also, if you want to come check out my streams or other channels, link down in the description. I post other kinds of content if you're interested, like gameplay, voiceovers, and, uh, general stuff. But nevertheless, my name is Aster, and thank you for chilling with me.